Hey guys, my name's Evan. Welcome to Country View Acres. So, me and Rebecca, we just got done unpacking our first array of solar panels. We've got a total of 12 panels, 3,780 watts. And our goal this year is to build a permanent solar power system for our house to provide power to all of the critical devices in our house. We're not exactly sure how big the total system is going to be yet. So today what we're going to do is we're actually going to take eight of these panels and we're going to build a temporary array just to the side of our house. That way we can at least start playing around with the solar power. So I bought these solar panels from Signature Solar down in Texas. They were running a sale here at the end of the year. And um, these are actually made by Canadian Solar. They're a good, uh, good name brand solar panel. And you can see how big they are. They're five and a half feet tall. They are three feet, three inches wide. They weigh like 40 pounds. So that is awful big and bulky to try to manage by yourself. So when I handle these, I'm gonna have to have Rebecca help me. That way we don't break anything. So for the temporary array, I thought it would be easier to build off of something existing, as long as it really didn't get in the way. So I've decided to use our garden fence. I think this is actually gonna work out really well. We've got these posts here, and they're spaced down like every eight feet in that direction. So we, we can build off of this side right here. This is south facing toward the sun. So we're gonna build a frame off of each one of these posts, and it's gonna be like a triangular frame. That way the solar panel is sitting at an angle facing toward the sun. Now the one challenge of doing this is hopefully you can tell that this actually goes downhill. So we wanna put our solar array in level, and, but we're actually gonna go downhill too. So it'd be interesting to build this because as we build it, the array is gonna get higher and higher off the ground as we go that direction. But I still think this is gonna be the easiest thing to do. So I'm just gonna build this array at 45 degrees for the simplicity of it. All right, I got my main pieces cut out. I'm gonna go ahead and start screwing this together. This may look a little weird at first, but uh, hopefully it's gonna be good and strong. This board is gonna sit on top and I'll just put a spacer under here. So right there is what one of the frames look like. So now I just basically need to go ahead and build three more. I'm gonna go ahead and mark out where the, the top of this frame that we just built is gonna be. So this end is the easy end. The other end, we're gonna have to figure out where level is. So we're gonna run a string level, just like you would if you were laying concrete block. All right, I think right there is it. That's gonna be the top of our solar array frame, right there. All right, I got my frame here. I've got some lag screws pre-drilled, and then I had to put some spacer blocks back here just to space it out because of the way this garden fence is built. hole isn't perfect. We're going to go a little lower. <laughs> this one here is going to be off the ground pretty far.
I went ahead and put my string back up. That way I know I've got a perfectly straight line between both ends. I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple more screws here at the top. I think that this connection right here is probably the weakest part of this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut some legs so it'll help hold up the front of the array. So we're just going to put this foot underneath the front. I'm going to go ahead and take the sod off. Now remember this is just temporary I mean, if this was permanent we'd put these in the ground a couple feet so that you really had some support well i just realized that this wasn't long enough i actually need five frames to make it 32 feet long so luckily i came up with enough material to be able to uh, build this one Well, that one's definitely above the ground, almost three feet. The last thing to do now is to put some purlins across here. We're gonna do two rows, and then that's what our solar panels are gonna to attach to. All right, I've moved the string so it's one foot from the top at each end. We're just gonna mark where this first purlin's gonna go. Now I'm moving the string down to four feet from the top. And then that's where our next mark is going to be for the bottom purlin. So I'm going to put this first purlin above the line. So the second purlin we're going to put under the line. Oh, I made it a tight fit. Of course, I made it kind of tight. There. Oh, and then I lose it on the other side. I think we're pushing the length of this board. Let's try that again. Well, I think I've got the ground mount complete now and I'm ready to start putting on some solar panels. So I've already ran a string going all the way to the other end and that's gonna give me a nice straight line to be able to put my solar panels up against and then hopefully I can keep them nice and straight the whole way down there. And I think when I put these on, I'm gonna put them above the string, probably about four inches. So the top of the solar panel will be about there. I think that'll look pretty good. And uh, I don't want to break these putting them on, so I'm going to go get Rebecca for some help. And then uh, we'll start getting these mounted up. Go ahead and lay it down. Okay, you see your mark?
Well, I think I can go a little more torque than that because it ain't tight. That is tight. I think it'll stay. Go ahead. So scary. <laughs> it's All a right. lot of weight hanging just on that. So to attach the solar panels to the ground mount, all I'm using is a two and a half inch lag bolt. And then I've got a fender washer on the end. And that works really good in between the panels because it'll clamp evenly on both panels. And to make sure that I get it, I guess, tight, but not overly tight, I am pre-drilling. I think this is a quarter inch bit I'm pre-drilling. And then I'm actually, instead of using an impact gun, I'm using a drill driver and I'm using the torque setting on here to drive the lag screw in. And that gives me at least a little bit of control on how tight I tighten them. Now on the edge, like this end panel, this doesn't really work out too well because the washer wants to angle and then the bolt, you know, the lag bolt wants to start going to the side. So I may end up putting a, a couple more in there or I may have to come up with something else just to make it more secure on the ends but this does seem to work at least in between the panels. Me. Well, I was hoping to get this all finished up today, but it's uh, already getting dark. So we'll be back tomorrow. We'll finish this up. But we did get the ground mount built. We got all the solar panels on. That's all eight solar panels that we're going to use right now. Tomorrow we'll hook up all the wiring under there, and then we're going to run it over and into the basement of our house, over to the mechanical room where we'll be able to use it. So I woke up this morning and everything was covered with snow. We got about two inches of snow last night. The solar panels were completely covered. The ground was completely covered. So I didn't want to start outside this morning. So I actually started inside the basement and uh, started running wire from in the mechanical room above the ceiling in the basement and then out here to the solar panels. I do have that all hooked up now. I just finished up and this is temporary. This is a temporary solar panel setup. And the goal is to have this move to the pole barn roof by spring before we ever have to mow the yard, okay? So hopefully these will be, these should be moved before we ever have to mow the grass. So the way I ended up running the wire out here is I actually used PVC conduit and I, and I just, I just laid it on the ground and it's going up under the solar array there. And um, you can see it runs back here underneath the house where it goes up underneath the basement to the mechanical room. And that PVC is just to, to protect it, right? Um, to, to, so we remember that it's there and just to protect it for the next few months. If this was a permanent installation, that wire would be buried in the ground, in conduit probably uh, in, underneath the ground. And then of course these posts right here would have been sunk in the ground as, as well. So this is just a temporary setup. So these solar panels are going to hook up to the EcoFlow Delta Pros in the basement so that we can do a little bit of testing with solar. And the reason I'm going to all this trouble is because I want to see how much power we can actually produce in the wintertime. We don't get a lot of sun around here. You can see that, right? It is cloudy. The sun's actually going to go down soon, but you can't even tell where the sun actually is. And um, we don't typically get a lot of sun in this area and in the wintertime it's just, it's cloudy a lot, right? So I wanna see what the real world results are. How much solar can we actually make in the winter time? That way when I build our permanent system, 
I can actually size it correctly so that I'm not surprised in the winter time when we don't have enough power. So that's why I'm going to all this trouble is to actually see how well it does in the winter so that I can size everything right. So the way I've got this set up right now, this is actually two arrays of 1260 watts each. So the first four panels is going to one of the EcoFlows and then the second four panels is going to the other one. And I've got them all set up in the basement right now. I'm actually running the house off the solar generators right now. But you can tell with the way the day looks, it's super cloudy and the sun's getting ready to go down and um, it's not bright out here at all. It probably looks way brighter in the camera, but we're pretty much not making any solar power right now. And this is exactly what I wanna find out is, is really how much can I expect real world results out of these panels. But uh, let's go ahead, we'll head to the basement and I'll show you what I've been doing in there. So here in the mechanical room, I've got the two Delta Pros and I've moved the generator plug right here. So now I can just plug them in inside and then right here, this conduit coming down, this is our solar panels and then they're just hooked up to the Delta Pros right here. So this isn't the way I want this sitting out here like this. I'm gonna actually clean out from underneath this staircase and these are going to actually sit under there out of the way and they'll basically be hooked to the solar and they'll be hooked to the generator plug and they'll be ready to go when we do have a power outage. So today is Sunday, last day of the weekend, so it'll be a few days before I can actually come back out here and play around with the solar. It's always dark by the time I get home from work. So uh, at least I did get everything set up the, the way I want it. Uh, the solar panels are ran into the basement now. They're hooking to the solar generators. The solar generators are plugging in right next to the breaker panel where I can switch it over and back up the house from inside the basement. So I think everything's set up the way I want it to be. And uh, hopefully next weekend we'll come back, we'll start playing around, see what those solar panels can actually produce. Uh, my feeling is it's in the winter time, they're gonna produce quite a bit lower than what they're rated at. 1260 watts is what they're rated at. I think that's gonna be quite a bit lower in the winter time. And hopefully, um, you know, from all this testing, I'll be able to, to size everything appropriately for when we actually do build a permanent system. That's the reason we're doing this, just to kind of get some real world results to know how many solar panels I actually need to have to power the stuff in the house that I want to power. But uh, I think that's going to be it for this video, guys. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.